Today's emulation video, I, I will be making it on the FM or the Fujitsu FM7 computer. This computer was released in 1982 by Fujitsu Corporation. This was meant to be a budget home computer back in the early 1980s. And it came with two uh, Motorola 8-bit 68B09 processors. Initially, when it was released, it was released with two megahertz processors. And as time went by, uh, faster processors were added for different variants of the Motorola 68B09 were added. And the initial offering had only 64 k bytes of RAM, and this was pretty much similar with other computers of the time, like the Commodore 64 and the Atari 400 or 800. Some computers came with even less, like the uh, Spectrum uh, ZX, Z the ZX Spectrum or the St. Clair ZX Spectrum came with about 48 k bytes of RAM in this so computers at that time came with about anywhere from 48 to 64 k bytes of RAM. Even had a dedicated video card with its own VRAM, 48 kilobytes. Um, it it did have a number of storage devices. Um, came with floppy disk drives, had tape drives. Three and a half inch floppy disk drives, it says here. And a 10 to 20 megabyte hard drive in 1982. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty good for 1982 because a lot of computers didn't even have hard drives. Display 640 by 200. That's pretty high for 1982. I think it even had a dedicated sound, sound card. Yamaha AY3 8910 sound chip, okay. And this computer looks like a standard computer of nineteen eighties. It kind of like looks like a where you have the keyboard integrated with the computer and sometimes the floppy disk was integrated into the computer as well, like the Commodore um, Amiga or Apple II computers like that. See how much this computer retailed for? $1,250 back in 1982. That's a lot of money. Today's money, that'd be like... Uh, About three thousand, about almost four thousand dollars in today's money. These are the different models and what they were capable of. So as time went by, um, the newer variants of the FM seven seven had more RAM, like one hundred ninety two ke kilobytes maximum of four forty eight, and VRAM of one forty four kilobytes. But this computer just looks like a standard computer from the 19, early 1980s. Keyboard integrated on the computer. R800 as well. Apple II. And a lot of times these early computers didn't even come with uh, floppy disk drives. Or you had to pay extra for it. You also had tape drives as well, which was a lot slower. So let's start. So you could download this. I'll leave this in the video description below if you want the links for it.
Just download this. You can download this for for the ROMs here. The games. If you want more games, you could uh, go to uh, My Abandonware and go to uh, FM7 and download some games from here as well. Just make sure you select the right version when you go to My Abandonware. Because they have multiple platforms. So just select the one for the FM7, like here. And that's pretty much it. That's where you could get all the stuff. When you get the file here, this file, download it now. Back in the back in the day, a lot of these computers had the operating system uh, on the ROM or or the firmware chip. So you didn't need a hard drive or anything. Everything was just on there already. Okay, it looks like I got it now. You'll need a computer called 7-Zip if you don't have one. Just go to 7-Zip's website and download it. I'll leave that in the video description also. Here's the file. The Neo Kobe emulator packs have a lot of different emulators as well, not just not just for the Fujitsu FM7, it's got others, but for this video I just want these emulators. I'm gonna put that right there into my emulator folder. Get rid of that. Don't need that. I want to use this emulator. I tried the others. Some of them had problems with using full screen. And for the games, I just put them into the games folder. You could download the games and put them in here. But I separated it to three categories. Discs, which are in .d77 format, like you can see here. As for multi-disc games, I put them into their own separate folders like this. As for tapes, they're called .t77 file, files with .t77 extensions like that. You also have .xm7 files. And I'll show you how to load each one. But let me start. Okay. All the BIOS files are in these files, in these uh, emulators, so you don't have to get it separately. They should just work right out of the box. Let's uh, make it a little bit bigger. Okay. It only works up to this. Let's try that. Okay, that works too. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to load some games. I just have to know where my games are at. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to load a tape game. But what you can do is... For me, it's the games are right there for tape games. Let's see. Let's try Pac Man. That one's a bad file, so let me let me get another Pac Man file.
Let me get another copy of it. I guess the tapes are bad, so we'll just load another one. Load another tape game. Let's try Boulder Dash. So I loaded that into the tape. I'll load. To run the game, just type run. That's it. For tape games. Um, full screen is alternate. Alt, enter. My DVR has some problems when I put it into full screen, so I'll be running it like this. The move, it's um, the number pad. It just keeps moving as you can see to stop number five. Okay, so let me get out of here. Load another game. This time I'll be loading a disc. Game. Floppy this game. Let's try Spalid. I'm going to load disk A. There's two disks for this game. It's a multi disk game. So I'm going to load it into disk 2. So 0 is 1, 1 is 2. In computer, um, in computers, um, 0 is counted as a number, by the way. So I'm going to restart. Be able to start. F11 is a uh, mouse focus, so if you don't want to see the mouse, it's F11, like that. For this game, I'm pressing spacebar to shoot. For other games, it could be X or W. X or Z, sorry. Okay, 
Let me get out of here. You could press Alt to, you know, F11. F11 to get out. Try something else. Eject all. This time I want to run a XMP file. XM7 file, sorry. Okay. So I ran an XMP file, floppy drives and tape drives. Right, Dexter. For this game, for some reason, None of the keys work. I could press C, X, spacebar, nothing. So in order to play this game, I have to press F11, go to mouse focus, and left click on the mouse. I am able to play it this way. I'm using my number pad and my mouse. Clicking on my left mouse button to shoot. Playing the game is kind of like awkward. When you play like this, it's quite awkward. But you don't have a choice. If I press the right mouse button, I'm able to activate my shield. In order for you to stop, it's number five. It doesn't stop automatically, see? I'm not pressing it, I just press left, it just keeps moving left. If I press 5, it stops. If I press 6 on the number pad, it keeps moving to the right. So let me get out of here. F11. Volgard. This game, it's uh, Z, Z, and W to shoot. As for the joystick, I never got it to work on this computer. Just have to play with your keyboard. Okay. On other games, sometimes the mouse, sometimes the buttons don't work at all. Like, for example, Galaga. Even if you put it on mouse focus. You could move, but you just can't shoot for some games like this. If you could figure this out, you can um, leave it in the comment section below. Share with us on how you did that. Okay. 
Yeah, none of the buttons work for this game. Spacebar doesn't work. ZX don't work. Nothing. Enter, no. Nothing. Let me get out of here. So that concludes this video. Um, I want to show you something else. You could configure the machine to different machines because all the BIOS files are in here. You could change the sound sampling quality. You could change the volume. If this is a keyboard. I don't know what this is really. As for joystick, none of it works. I tried every every one of these. They don't work. The keyboard thing doesn't work either. If you know how to do it, you could leave it in the comment section below. Here you could change different options. Connect to port intelligent mouse. That's pretty much it. Again, full screen is alt enter. If you want to enter into full screen to get out, it's alt enter. And thanks for watching.